Um, how many people have been to China before? Can you raise your hand? Okay, more than that I expected. So, no matter what I said later, you may not, you may not know whether it's true or not. <laughs> because most of you haven't been in China before. Okay. Let me give you a few rough ideas about uh, K-12 education in China now. First of all, at this current moment, there are 9.4 million students are doing the college entrance examination in China. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, they are doing the most important examination in their life because the score is the only criteria for them to enter into the college. So you know how fierce the competition it is. And I share with you the number. There are 163 million students from the primary school, middle school, and high school together. Thank you. So I know Israel's population is how, man, how much? Eight million, right. So you know how complicated for our education system to manage so many students. And we have 10.8 million teachers. And we have 26, 260,000 schools. And the majority of these schools are public schools. Around 95% are owned and funded by the government. So let's share with you the key challenges and the opportunities. The challenges is very obvious. When you go to the rural areas in China, you will find out that this is the classroom, typical classroom. They are teaching every day. For a children, they may need to take one and a half hour by walk to their school. Some of the provinces, some of the rural areas, my colleagues went to these areas every year. We volunteer to be the teacher and play with the children each year, so we know them. Their parents, most of them are working in the southeast part of China, working in the factory, so the children cannot see their parents more often. Thanks for the mobile internet, majority of them have the mobile phone, so they can talk with their parents by WeChat. But still, if you compare with this picture with the next picture, you will find out that in the first tier of cities in China, actually all the public schools, majority of them are very rich. They are well funded and they are compelling with the Israel schools as well. They have the best hardware, software, and they provide the STEM courses to the children. So this is the big difference, the big gap, very unbalanced situation. And another very challenging situation is the monthly wage of each teacher in China is very low. It's only around 500 to 800 US dollars per month. So uh, the good news is increasing very slowly. But still, you know that actually the teacher in the middle school, they are very hardworking. They work very long time. And they are also the parents of the children. They need to go home to cook the dinner for their child as also. So in China, actually, teacher, we say it's a very well-respected career. But in the truth, majority of the young people, they are reluctant to become the teachers in the public schools. So if you say the after-school children market is very big, 80 billion US dollars per year. Why? Because college entry examination push all the parents to buy the after-school children's service to push their children to get a better score, to go to better college. So this is a big market. And you can find out that another good news is our government from this session, they promised to invest about four points GDP, percentage of GDP in the education. So we are well funded. But the bad news is majority of them are paid for the wage and the benefits of the maintenance of the schools. And uh, some of them go to corruption. And uh, this session of government uh, is, very doing well, is doing very well on the anti-corruption. But uh, still, some schools, they bought the hardware in the school, but actually this hardware never be used. They just carry the dust and uh, rust it there. So the good news is more and more schools are willing to pay for the SaaS product, or we call it software and the service. So this is the good news, and the challenge is uh, still schools are willing to 
pay for the hardware, some of them. So this is a summary of the challenges and op opportunities. I will not repeat. And uh, what is our solution? What is our strategic move to this situation? First of all, we have to identify which is the main battlefield for the K-12 online education. There's a saying that whether it's in school or after school, we believe that because 80 percentage of learning time is happened in school, so that's why we have to focus all our resources in school. Because if the 80 percentage time of child is wasted, they are provided a very poor education material and they are very treated not very effectively and efficiently on the learning. So it's a kind of waste of time. No matter how much money the parents put on them after school, 80% of time was wasted. So we believe that even in school, business is a small. It's not that big. But after school business is, is big. But we believe that if you want to deliver the true value, you have to go to in school. So we position ourselves to provide the ad SaaS to schools. We position ourselves as a CIO of school. Um, this three word actually means chief information officer. They have another meaning is uh, we want a teacher have confidence to use our product. We want they have the inspiration to save their time, increase their efficiency. And last, we want our operation or our service can satisfy the teachers. So this is our product. Majority of them are the learning management system and the other online product also to public schools. So our company is a unique company because we're covering 113 cities in China. So if you know China, there are totally 300 cities in China. And these 113 cities are very rich cities. So we have 1,600 CIO, which is our field people. They visit, they visit the school every day. They teach the teachers how to use our software, and they also sell our SaaS product to the public schools. And uh, we are covering 21,000 schools in China. We are the biggest uh, channel to the public schools now. So at last, the key takeaway is a very big and unbalanced situation in China, and uh, the public school, we believe, is the main battlefield. And SaaS is Qtong's strategic move. And actually, we have uh, around 20 representatives from the different companies in China to attending this summit. So I'd like to represent them to express our belief is that education is a way to the bright future. And we believe China will have a bright future. I know that Moody have the concern that our jobs will be cut. Actually, I have to say that we are very lucky comparing with India because we already catch up the labor time of the factory, so our labor already get very good education, at least the basic education. If India, they, they, if they want to catch up, they may have more serious problem. But at, at the same time, we know that we have big, very big distance compared with Israel. That's why we come here. That's why we want to introduce more high-tech uh, companies to China to work with us to change the education in China. So. We want, we believe that China will have a bright future by delivering better education, by working with you, by hardworking by ourselves also. Thank you very much.